Hey, Psalms. Psalms 123. Moving right along. Song of Degrees, and we talked about that earlier. A song is a song. A song is a song. Unto thee, which would be God, lift up my eyes. You gotta lift up our eyes because God is higher than us. Unless you got pride. As Jesus said about that man that the uh the publican that went to the, to pray before the Lord, he wouldn't even lift his eyes up. He was so humble. O thou that dwellest in the heavens. That's God. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their master. Today we would say as an employee looks to his employer, his boss. One of the things would be, what would you have me to do, boss? What's my job assignment? Where's my pay? <laughs> Payday. And as the eyes of a maiden, a, a young woman, unto the hand of her mistress. And that's a picture of the story of Naaman. That little maiden that worked for Naaman's wife. It's an employee-employer relationship. And it's... And it's not so looking for money, it's what's my next job? And what, what the writer of the psalmist is saying, Lord, give me a job to do. I finished the present job, I need something to do. That's what, that's what the thing is. A servant would be to the master, all right, sir, I finished the, the commands, what you told me. I've done what you told me to do. I need more. The maiden, ma'am, I've done it. I need more. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God for work. And then one day we'll get a reward of pay. Looking to the master, looking to the mistress for a supply. Looking for a defense. Listen, if you're a good servant or, or a, a good maiden and there comes conflict, the master and the mistress would probably do, if you're, you're favored by them, they probably do all they can do to protect you. And they're going to supply your needs. You know, it's kind of funny. And... When you look at, listen, slavery is bad. But when you look at the paintings and you look at the work of the slaveries down south, you saw that they were dressed. They had the white man's church. They were strong and had food. Now, yeah, there were bad slave owners. But there were more good slave owners than there were the bad ones. And they... Listen, they've done the work, so they must have been fed. They must have been ta taken care of. So our eyes wait on the Lord our God. So you know what this movement is? Oh, servitude and slave and, and, and all these lives matter, but I don't have a right. You know, my poor doesn't have the right. I've got rights. And if I don't like it, I can take off the job and go apply for unemployment. And you're taking away the service to God. The devil's already taken away the fatherhood of children. Today there are children that are born and they have an, uh, any idea who their father would be. And a father is supposed to be the representation of God the Father. And that's missing. So our eyes will wait upon the Lord our God as we would for a boy. Give us a job to do. Take care of us. Supply our need. Until that he have mercy upon us. They're expecting mercy from God. 
Then have mercy upon us, O Lord. He goes to the employer. I've done this. It is taken for granted. Most places, Friday you go to work. You get your pay. And sometimes you got to go in the boss and say, boss, you know, it's Friday. Oh, okay. You work all week to stack a paycheck at the end of the week. You rely on God and look unto God and then say, God, I expect mercy from you. And then ask for it. You might get more mercy than to deserve to you. If you do serve as well. The Lord may look at the books and say, yep, but give them a little extra. Give them a bonus. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Verily, verily. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. And that's despising. We're despising. We Our soul is exceedingly filled with scorning of those that are at ease. The ones not doing the work, they're scorning us. And we're despised. I know what it is. I know Christians that don't do nothing and they come back and attack those that do something for the Lord. That's nothing new under the sun, Solomon, right? It was going on in the times of the psalmist. But God, if I could say in reference to the passage, the employer God will one day call the employees in, saved or lost, and he'll check the time cards and he'll check the records. And those employees or Christians or non-Christians that are at the water cooler are off gabbing with other cubicles, haven't done the job that they have been paid for, left early, came late, did not uphold their part for the, for the business. God will reward them as such. And those employees that did do the work, those Christians that did serve the Lord, whether they served the Lord a lot or they served the Lord some, the Bible says gold, silver, precious stone, crowns, and inheritance. But those will not go for those that are Eve. And I got something that's not in the Bible, so you don't have to take this, but I was thinking this about the other night. I have had Christians under me, and I have tried to help them since 1987 when I was saved. And they've turned from me, they, they left, they, they got mad, they got angry, they turned away from the Word of God, they turned away from the church. I've seen their lives, it's miserable. And I tried to help them. And I become scorned. Would it be something in the millennium if I get an inheritance? I don't know if I'm getting one. I hope I do. I don't know if I've been faithful enough. But you say, let's take someone who's, who, who served the Lord and gets an inheritance. Wouldn't it be something to those that don't get crowns? Those that don't get an inheritance. Would it be something the millennial God takes those people who did, who were at ease? He says, I'm putting them under the person that they scorn. God will promote those. Promotion comes in the uh, east, west, south. But God. Would it be something all those people, all those Christians that are Christians. They scorn it. Would it be something that God puts them under your authority in the millennium? Now, I don't know about envy, but I don't know how they would be have to look at you whom they scorn and see the crown that's on your head and they ain't got none in there. Now, you can take that and throw it in the garbage can, but 
What do you do when you're in New Jerusalem? And if we cast if we cast our crowns at the Lord, what do you do if you ain't got no crowns? Now here on life on earth, verse two. If you don't have a job, you go out in the streets and you beg money. You uh, can I have a nickel? Can I have a quarter? Can I have a peso or whatever? You don't get the full benefits of a paycheck at all. That's only in America with welfare. And again, one of the, one of the themes of, of the Old Testament we see, in the, the, the theme of some of the aspects of Psalms is, all they that live godly for Christ, well, live godly for God, I'm going to say for the Old Testament, there's no Christ yet. All they that live godly for God, New Testament and Old Testament. All they that live godly for God, Jehovah, the Lord, are going to suffer persecution. And it's sorry that the persecution not only comes from the world, but it also comes amongst the camp of the children of God. Aaron and, and Miriam, Moses' own brother and sister, gave Moses a hard time. The ten spies that went out to spy the land gave Moses and Aaron a hard time. Yeah, Moab, Aaron, I mean, Moab and, and uh, Ammon, they gave Israel a hard time, but they're the world. The children of Aaron, of Kohath, come up against Moses and Aaron one day. Who do you think you are? The Apostle Paul writes to one church, Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Now, I don't know where people get the idea, but from TV and radio broadcastings of the devil and Satan, that Christian life is supposed to be wonderful and great and Friend, you haven't read the Old Testament, you haven't read the New Testament, because for the Old Testament, a man that is not under Christ, because there's no Christ yet, a man that's trying to live right for God, he's suffering, scorning. A Christian trying to do right what the Bible says, suffer scorning. People have not studied the life of Paul to think, oh, And when people believe the prosperity of the gospel and God, you know they're not a Bible reader. Especially the New Testament. They have never read the story of King Saul going after David. Our soul is exceedingly filled with scoring of those that are Eve. They ain't doing nothing for God. And with contempt, despising of the proud. Of the people that are pride are despising those that do right. Man, that, that was the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the priests. There's one point in, in the Gospel of John that the, 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 the high priests were having a meeting with the Sanhedrin. And I don't know if I'm going to find it. I just read it the other day. Let's see if I can find it. But it, the high priest is in the room and he's talking talking to the other the other set the other people like him and they're like he's so sinner mm. they're not like, <coughs> excuse me they're not like us you see Jesus he's eating with the with the the publicans and the sinners. Ew. And that's what verse 4 the despising of the proud. Not like us.
Friend, I don't know what date this psalm is written. It, it don't have dates here. But it happened in the Old Testament as much as it will happen in the New Testament. They're going to despise you because you love Jesus and love the Bible. Plain and simple. Who was the first person despised for loving the Lord? Abel. And what did Abel get? He got clobbered. He got killed. It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 4. All they that lived godly, and for the Christian, and all they that lived godly in Christ Jesus, all they that lived godly in the Old Testament, are going to suffer persecution. And John wrote, marvel not if the world hates you. And it's pretty much if the world loves you, you are not really a Bible Christian. And you need to examine your life. Because our soul is exceedingly filled with scorning of those that are eased, they're not doing nothing, and the contempt of the despising of the pride. You know how many people, when I'm preaching on the street in Daytona, you know how many people come up to me, oh, I'm a Christian, that's not what Jesus would do. And how on earth would you know what Jesus does because you haven't read your Bible? Because if you read your Bible, and if you studied the Bible, you would know that's exactly what Jesus did. I had a guy one time tell me, I got bad legs. I was I had a stool then. I have a chair now. I had a stool then. I was sitting on the stool and the guy said, why don't you stand up and preach? I went home that day and that week I, I read my Bible and I read it where Jesus got in a boat and sat down and talked to people. Somebody didn't read their Bible. You can preach sitting down. Jesus done it. So that's Psalm 123. Lord willing, tomorrow night, Psalm 124.